I see notifications from my dad and I'm like, hmm, okay, my dad sent me a message. I see a notification and in the notification it says, I'm gay, but no one knows. Now, <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is your boy Shaquan, and welcome back to another video. Um, if you're new here, please do click the subscribe button and subscribe. Please subscribe, it helps me out a lot. And also, um, if you would like to follow me on my social media Twitter, Instagram, you know the drill, do what needs to be done. So, let's get straight into this video. So, I was a bit apprehensive about filming this video, I didn't know if I wanted to film this video. If I'm being honest, but I was like, you know what? Let me share a more vulnerable side of myself on the internet for millions of people to see. <sighs> Today's video is a bit of a like soft topic for me, but like at the same time, I was like, I feel like it's a topic that I really wanted to speak about. I was like, you know what? Let me just rip off the bad data, just say it, and just speak about it, because maybe my experience could help someone else through their experience, and which is why I decided to do this video, and that is my coming out story. I really hate the concept of coming out. Like, I feel like it's really unfair that queer kids have to come out. It really does bother me, but like at the same time, I feel like I really just wanted to share my experience and my queer experience just on YouTube. Even though it's not like Pride Month or anything, I just am really proud of who I am. I'm a proud South African black gay man and I'm not embarrassed about it. I'm not ashamed of it. I've never been embarrassed about it. I've never been ashamed of it. <laughs> hey guys, you heard my coming out story. <laughs> yeah. I actually have two coming out stories. Like, I actually have two full-on coming out stories. One where I came out to my friends and just like society in general, and then the second one when I came out to my family. Like, my, the family one, I didn't really come out to my family. Like, I'll get into the story. I'll really get into the story. But like, my coming out story was a mess. Like, you know, like how other kids like had the opportunity to sit down with their parents and their family. You know, me tea. You know, just dip the tea biscuits and you know, just dip the tea like <sighs> So I'm gay. Yeah. I never got that experience. Like for me, my family coming out was <laughs> a completely different story. But like I feel like to fully grasp my coming out story and for my coming out story to make sense, I wanna explain like my whole I wanna explain my whole experience growing up as a kid that was different. So I feel like for the coming out story to have more of a impact, I would have to explain like where I was at mentally, when I was at those points, and why I was at those points mentally. So I'm just gonna start all the way from the beginning, so grab your popcorn, and let's go down the sad, sad, sad emotional journey of trauma. We're going back to young Shaquan, you know, let's go back down to the childhood trauma. Like, let's just dive in, you know? I mean, who doesn't like a good trauma story? Like, you know, we love sad memories, you know, let's, let's just dive in, you know what, if a tear or two comes out, excuse me, you know, I even have my tissue, I'm ready, I'm ready, let's get into the story. So, to understand my coming out story, I'm just gonna start from like, <laughs> the beginning, and that is primary school. So, when I was younger, I would always say that I was, you know what, I'm just gonna say it, like, I was obviously gay. I was one of those kids where, it was, I was really, like, it was obvious that this one is a... It, you could tell that this one was a bit different. Like, you could tell that this one wasn't the same as, like, other boys. He didn't like... Because, like, you know, like, the usual South African black boy, like, all the black boys, like, soccer, rappers, and all that stupid bullshit. Um, I didn't really like those types of things. Like, even when I was a kid, like, I was a different... I was a different kid, like, all gay kids grow up. Like, I was different. But, like, yeah, I guess I was sort of different. Like, different enough not my... My, the people around me just weren't used to it. So like, I, I did like boys toys. Ooh, boys toys. I did like boys toys, like cars and action figures and all that stuff. But I also like girls toys. Like I also like dolls. I also liked, um, actually I'm lying, I just like dolls. Uh, I didn't fuck with baby boys. Like I thought that was weird. Like from when I was a child, I knew fuck them kids. I know this is a tangent, but I did not fuck with baby boys. Baby boys, do you remember when anyone had a baby born? I did not fuck with those things. Like from a child, I always knew that, mm -mm, I want fuck them kids energy, like I always knew. I just wanted dolls, like I wanted to play with my Barbie, I even wanted to play with brats, oh child. I, like secretly as a kid, this is embarrassing, but like secretly as a kid, like guys, I used to ask my parents for pocket money and I used to go buy dolls. I used to go buy dolls as a kid, guys. I used to go buy dolls and like the shame when I would get to the till and the cashier was looking at me like, 
the cashier probably like the cashiers will always think that I'm buying the doll for like a friend or a sister or like but no he's buying it for himself so he can play with it and live his best gay fantasy in his room oh, I was living my fantasy okay ooh, I'm going off on a tangent I'm going off on a tangent stick to the story so uh, let's start with to explain like my whole story and background and to explain my coming out story let's start in primary school <laughs> let's start with my primary school journey which was probably where most of my traumatic childhood stemmed from <laughs> like there were other things in the mix like there were whole other things in the mix but like primary school was like a big one and primary school is actually the biggest reason why i ended up coming out like my experience in primary school was actually such a huge driving force to me coming out so yeah, let me explain to you primary school shaquan so from the beginning when i was in primary school i remember the first from grade one from grade one to seven i was always made fun of for being the gay kid like that was the narrative that was instilled onto me that this is the gay kid um and i was the butt of everyone's jokes like whenever any and then kids can be when kids don't understand it's not their fault but like kids don't understand something kids can be very um homophobic and they learn these things from their parents and like their parents are be quite honest their parents are the ones held accountable because like i don't know how it's fine for a seven eight year old child to go to school and call another seven eight year old child a homophobic slur like I remember when I was seven eight people called me something and I can't say it it's an Afrikaans word and it starts with the M and you guys might know what you might not I, I don't want to say it on the internet because I don't want to get demonetized I want my YouTube bag but like there was a homophobic slur there were two homophobic slurs that they used to call me one was the Zulu one that starts with the S um, and then the other one was the Afrikaans one that starts with the M and imagine you're a seven and eight you're a seven year old child and another child calls you that to your face you are not fine with being called homophobic slurs to your face as a child. Like that sticks to you and that's not okay. But something that I realized when I was a kid is that I was naturally an extroverted and talkative kid. Like I was just naturally a confident and bubbly child. Just naturally that was me as a child. But like, the thing is, because of the years of bullying, I would be too scared to show people my real personality because like as a kid, obviously I had a higher pitched voice. I had a higher pitched voice, which is stupid because all little boys have higher pitched voices, but like mine was a higher pitch when I was a kid. And I also had feminine mannerisms. So a higher pitched voice combined with some feminine man mannerisms, like I got the narrative of being the gay kid. It was stamped onto me. Like before even before even these kids could even understand the concept of sexuality and understand what was gay, the narrative of what these kids had in their mind of what it was gay was really bad and negative. And that narrative spilled onto me. As a kid, um, I used to dull down my personality like as I got older in primary school I started dulling down my personality because I was like no every time I actually let my true self shine someone will just dim that light like literally someone will come and shut me down immediately someone will come make fun of me someone will call me something and like it didn't make it really I just hated always having to tell myself like there's nothing wrong with me I'm fine you know how people were naturally shy kids I became a shy kid because of bullying because I became shy because I was too I was bullied so much just for being who I am I was like I'm embarrassed. I got to a point where I was too embarrassed and too shy to be really who I am. So I decided not to show that at all. And I decided, you know what, let me just keep to myself. Let me be a quiet person. When I was a kid, I was not a confident person. And my self-esteem was very, very low. And like, being bullied from grade 1 to grade 7 really messes up with your self-esteem. Like, it messes up with your self-esteem and confidence and your sense of identity. And now, I couldn't, and even got to the point where I genuinely couldn't wait for primary school to be done. Which is why I was excited for high school. And then high school was where things got a little bit more tricky. And that brings me to high school. So when I got to high school, what I because of all the years of bullying, I just decided that in high school I decided that no. Honestly, I did not want to have the gay narrative slapped on me anymore. I was so tired of it. In high school I decided, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna get there and honestly just keep to myself. As much as I can like I'm just like you know what honestly I'm just gonna keep to myself as much as I can I'm not gonna draw any attention to myself I am just gonna be quiet and reserved and just keep to myself so people don't ask me questions people don't label me people don't do label any narrative onto me but of course that never worked because literally parts of my personality would always just jump out like I could not control it like parts of my personality would always jump out there was really no way like I think it was just the inner game me just <laughs> come jumping out so like parts of my personality would really would really just jump out in high school and like I really could not control it no matter how much I try to um, hold it in and like be reserved and not draw attention to myself it just happened like naturally it just happened 
So, let me explain my high school experience. So, it was a very small Christian private school. Like, it, it was... <laughs> now imagine. Interesting, a gay child going to a Christian private school. Child. It was a cute Christian school. Like, every day we, had, we would have... In the mornings, on Monday mornings, we would have praise and worship. We even had a subject called Bible. Like, Bible? We had Bible. Bible. <laughs> High school is when I decided to come out. Now we get into the coming out story. High school is when I decided to come out. So here I am. So here I am. I'm in high school. You know, I'm feeling better about myself. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm not gonna draw attention to myself. I'm just gonna keep to myself. Like in my high school, um, they were gay kids in my high school. Like, even though it was a Christian school, like I feel like there's gay people everywhere. But like in my high school, there were gay kids. So there were like three or four of us who were, you know what, lack of a better word or description, the three or four of us who were obviously gay. <laughs> yeah, there were three or four of us who were honestly obviously gay, like you, everyone and their mother could tell that this child is a gay kid. But like, of course, since it was a Christian school, and I was one of those three kids, but like, since it was a Christian school, like, no one could talk about it, like, no one could express, no one felt comfortable talking about it because like what was weird about my school is that all types of sin was discussed like when it came to sin the girlies would yap 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 on about sin like this has nothing to do with religion like this video is not a religion video or anything but like I'm just telling you my experience everyone would yap 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 about sin shop but whenever it would come to homosexuality or sexual immorality that was sort of skimmed up like it was skimmed, like no one actually like discussed, like my school wasn't necessarily homophobic at all, even though it was a Christian school, like they didn't really teach us anything homophobic, like all of the homophobic things that some of the kids had were honestly from home, like it literally was not being taught at school. They weren't homophobic, but they weren't at the same time accepting of homosexuality, like anytime the, con anytime the topic of homosexuality would come up, it would be like skimmed across, like oh yeah, homosexuality is bad. But like, this, this, and this, this, this is also bad. But like, homosexuality was never like a focal point at any time. And that's what I appreciated about my school, about my high school. Like, they didn't push the agenda of being gay was bad. Like, they, actually like, sexuality wasn't even really spoken about. But now what was interesting about me in high school is that high school was the first time where the gay narrative wasn't slapped onto me. I know conversations around my sexuality were being had behind my back. I knew that for a fact and I even walked into it at some point. And like, I wasn't surprised with that because that was natural because now the more comfortable I got with my high school friends and my high school class, the more my gay tendencies, I guess, would come out and the more people would see that, hmm, this one's not like other boys, this one's a bit different. High school was actually when I started like developing my personality and started being more comfortable with my personality and I was starting to like it and obviously now people are starting to notice my personality and like conversations are starting to be had about oh is he gay like oh is he just feminine or like what's going on but like no one would like directly ask me but I know those conversations were being had so I remember one day in grade 9 I walked into class and like it was a group of people just sitting down and then they were having a conversation and literally, they didn't know that I was coming into the class and I was about to walk in. But literally, as I walked in, I heard my name being said. And, they were, and the girl was like, oh, he is so gay. And I walked in and they didn't notice. They were carrying on with the conversation and they didn't notice that I was there. And then I was so taken back by that. And I'm like, I went up to them. And I, I went up into them and I was like, I'm like, oh, really? This is what we're going to do? You're going to talk behind my back rather than say it to my face? And then she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm really so sorry. I didn't know. I'm like, please save it. And then I just walked out because I was just so annoyed. I just walked out because I was honestly just so annoyed. And then when I went back home, I cried my little heart out. Like, I really cried. And even though I'm glad that I stood up for myself back then, but like, I really cried because it just reminded me of my primary school days and like how it's happening all over again. The gay narrative is being split onto me. People are just seeing gay whenever I walk across people just see the word gay just written on my forehead like stamped on my forehead and I'm like I was so tired of that like, and then that night I decided that you know what I'm just gonna be honest and come clean about who I really am because that night I decided that you know what tomorrow morning I'm gonna come out to my friends and the next day I sat down with my friends it was break I called my friends I sat them down and I came out to them but like I didn't really come out to them. I 
because I feel like coming out is more like I, it was a secret like I was gay in secret and for me I don't think I was ever gay in secret I just never talked about it like I just never talked about it I never wanted to talk about it but like it's not like it was something that I was actively hiding it was just something that I just didn't want to talk about because it made me uncomfortable and I didn't want the narrative but like when I came out to my friends that's when I came out when I came out to my friends I told them I sat them down I was like okay hey guys like I'm gay I know conversations have been going around about my sexuality and I just wanted to make it clear that yes I am gay and I'm not gonna hide it anymore and I'm gonna be honest about it and the reason why I came out to my friends was because I wanted to take the power for myself I did not want to be I wanted to have the power of my sexuality and my identity in my hands like I didn't want anyone to use that as a weapon against me I did not want anyone to come to me and bully me because I'm gay I didn't want to give anyone power over me because I was gay. I was like, no, I'm gonna take that power for myself and I'm gonna be true in myself. And I'm gonna be like, if anyone would come to me and try to sidestep me and be like, oh, you are, you're the gay kid. I'll be like, yeah, so, so, what's the problem? I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think I was one of the first openly gay kids in, prim in my high school. If anyone asked me to anything that I had to do with my sexuality, I was open about it and I was honest about it because I wasn't embarrassed about it anymore and I was just me to the fullest extent of me. Now let's get on to how I came out to my family. So, right, I came out in high school, um, I was just honest, I was living my best life, I was my best self. But like, at home it was a different story. I think at home, I have to put things into context, I think at home everyone knew I think this happens in a lot of black homes where everyone knows but like it's not a conversation that's being had like no one will have the conversation no one is comfortable enough to have the conversation like your parents won't have the conversation and you won't have that conversation with your parents because you you're scared how they're gonna react so like in African homes and black homes everyone knows that that kid is gay but like everyone's in denial of it not even in denial everyone's either a in denial or b they just don't talk about it like it's just something that we don't talk about it it's not a conversation we have because if you bring it up you're gonna ruin the family dynamic like we have because in a lot of families the dynamic is so good but the moment you bring that up in conversation it's like the dynamic switches like and i feel like that's what happens in a lot of black families like people sex gay being gay is just like the giant elephant in the room everyone knows about it but either a people would choose to be denial or b People just choose to ignore it and not bring it up in conversation and not acknowledge it or confront it. So that was me and my family. And I feel like literally every family member in my family, that was literally me. Either A, people were denial or B, no one wanted to confront it. So it was varsity. I moved out of I moved out of my house. I moved into Joburg. I got a cute little, I moved into Razor Joburg. It was my first time living in Joburg. I was living my best day life. It was nice, homunati, and then um, I started getting into contact with one of my cousins um, and he he's also gay but like it's not a conversation that's been had in the family as well like he never came out same like me and then we had a conversation about it and then he asked me point blank parent is like we were obvi obviously we were both gay like the whole world knew we were gay but like obviously it was not a spoken thing in our family like it was not a spoken thing in our family like no one spoke about it no one said anything and we didn't come out but like we spoke to each other and we we're like okay he was like hey i want to ask you are you gay i was like yeah i am gay and then he was like you know i'm gay also i'm like yeah i know and he was like i also knew you were gay as well and then we sort of like had like a bonding we, we started bonding over the fact that how we're the only two gay people in our family and we, we started bonding over that and it was really nice to have a cousin to talk to about my sexuality that kind of stuff and just have to have a family member because like there was literally no one in my family that I felt comfortable enough talking to about these types of things and it, it felt really good to be able to speak to my cousin about it and my cousin and I would text each other we would talk about boys we would talk about just experiences we would talk about things like grinder you know how it is dating and also I was 18 when I was in varsity my first year in varsity I was 18 so I was starting to experience a lot of new things so sometimes I'll ask advice and like it was really nice we would have conversations and also how we would how we feel about like being not being out in our family because we have a really big family and also our family is very close so we were like we were just speaking about it and like how we feel about it and everything and like all of these conversations were happening over whatsapp great cool beans that was nice now I'm living my best varsity life. Good I remember this one day I came back home from Groove. Drunk as a kite. I was drunk. I, I was drunk. I came back home. 
put my stuff and get ready to sleep. But then because I wasn't, when I was outside, I didn't have data. So as soon as I got back to it, the Wi-Fi started working. I started getting my messages, my messages. And then, you know like how you get a notification of the message and you see it's from whoever. I see notifications from my dad. And I'm like, hmm, okay, my dad sent me a message. I see a notification. And in that notification, it says, I'm gay, but no one knows. Now, <laughs> I need y'all to understand what was going through my head. I am drunk out of my mind. I was like, yeah? Did, I was like, is my dad a gay? Is my dad a gay? Is my dad, is, is my daddy a, not my daddy a, not my daddy a. My daughter is going to. I was like, I was so drunk. I switched on my phone and I went to sleep. And like, I was just so confused. But like, I really didn't sleep. I was like, you know what? Maybe open my phone because ah, uh -uh, maybe go to these messages. And then I'm seeing messages. I'm like, I'm seeing messages like I'm gay, but no one in my family knows. Um, yeah, I've always known, and I don't know how to say it to my family. But like, as I'm reading these texts, these are texts that my father is sending me, like actual texts, like they were typed down and he's sending these to me. Now, a lot of confusion is going in my head. I'm like, is my dad coming out to me in this moment? Like, what the hell is going on, child? Like, what is going on? Like, literally, I'm like, is my dad coming out to me? I'm so confused. But then something clicks in my head as I'm reading this text. I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh. These words look strangely familiar. And like, as I'm reading these texts, like, he's sending me text by text by text by text by text. And then I'm also realizing some of these texts that he's sending, seem like a conversation like he's sending the text like it's a conversation between two people and then i'm like wait this looks very familiar i've said these words before and i've typed down these words to someone else before and I, also some of these things i'm like no someone has said this to me before and then it clicked i'm like wait did i not say this to my cousin and did my cousin not reply with this to me so i go to the chat with my cousin because i'm like ah, ah something is suspicious very suspicious i go to the chat with my cousin and then i see that the chat with my cousin is correlating with the text my dad is sending me and then I realized that it was the conversations that I was having with my cousin in the beginning when we first got into contact and we started speaking about our sexuality now all this confusion is going through my head like I, now I'm feeling betrayed I'm like oh my gosh like how could my cousin have done that because now like my parents know and like it scared the living sh like it scared the hell out of me. I, I was so scared and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm outed to my family. And like, that was the scare. That was like, one of the biggest fears that I had. Like, I wasn't, one thing about me, like, I do not give a shit about society. Like, I do not care if society liked me or not. I do not care if society accepted me. Like, I was my own person. I knew that I'm great. Like, I really didn't need society's acceptance or tolerance. I did not care. Like, I actually did not care. But one thing I did need and I could never lie is that I really did want my family's acceptance. I really did. That's something that I really wanted and now it's scary to know that my relationship with my family could be changed just because someone else outed me. Like someone else took something that was so, such an intimate moment, such an intimate moment between two people and shared it with, out of all people, my father. Girl, I just closed my phone, I just mised and I never spoke about it. Like my dad and I, when I went back home um, for the weekend, my dad and I didn't speak about it, like nothing. Like he acted like he, in fact, he was the one who picked me up. Like, he was the one who used to pick me up in varsity. And he picked me up from Riz. Didn't say anything. Two, three months passed, didn't say anything. And then one day, like three months later, he sat me down and he was like, okay, let's have a conversation about the message that I sent. He asked me straight up, are you gay? And I was like, yes. And it was such an, an uncomfortable conversation, but like, we had a conversation about it. And then he was like, okay, listen, I've always known and honestly i love and accept you and i'm always going to support you and like hearing those words from my dad like oh guys my parents like i'm really grateful for my parents and like i'm really grateful for the fact that out of all parents like a dad being the one to say like listen i accept you and i'm going to support you like no matter what you do like it was it was so heartwarming and like it really made me feel so good especially coming from how I used to feel like as a kid, like the fact that as a kid I really used to feel like I really couldn't speak to my parents about this like, and sometimes I wish that my my dad knew about like how terrible my primary school experience was but like to hear those words and I feel like if if I knew that as a child that listen 
the fact that they all, the fact that yeah, if I knew that as a child, I feel like I would have been a different person in primary school and I wouldn't have cared about what people said about me in primary school. But then we had that conversation and my dad said he loves and accepts me and he was like, okay, maybe don't tell your mom yet because you don't know how she would react. And then I honestly understood. But then um, a couple months passed and we actually moved on to the next year. It was my dad's 40 something birthday. And then it was us, a couple of uncles and my brothers. We were all sitting down in a restaurant. We were drinking with Nyanji, the Charles, you know. The Charles was going in and so I think it was liquid courage. I don't know, but like my parents looked at me. I don't know where everyone else on the table went. To be quite honest, like I don't know where everyone else on the table went, but for some reason it was just me, my mom and my dad left on the table. I don't know where my brothers went, either my brothers went to go to the bathroom or something. My uncles were probably at the bar or something. I don't know. But for some reason it was just me, my mom and my dad left at the table for like a good 10 minutes. And then my mom was like to me, listen, I, my mom was like, okay, listen, I'm going to support you with whatever you want, like whatever you want, like if, it, if it's like a modeling career, a social media career, whatever, I'm going to, I said, I'm going to support you. And also your sexuality, I support that as well. And like when she said that, I was taken aback. And then like they both said to me, like, listen, they both sat me down and I had a conversation with me to me like listen we did always know and we accept you and we're gonna support you like no matter what that we love you and we're gonna be here for you no matter what and we have everything that we can do whatever we can do for you and whatever we can do to help people do it and yo that moment that conversation was uncomfortable I'm not gonna lie because they, in between the conversation they asked me very uncomfortable questions like very uncomfortable questions but like it was the fact that my parents with, it's the fact that my parents actually, it's the fact that that moment I knew that my parents had always had my back and it's something that I really, really wish that I knew when I was a child because when I was a kid I really needed my parents but like I chose not to tell my parents because I just, I was too scared that my parents wouldn't accept me and that was a very scary thing and now to know as an, as an adult that my family loves and accepts me in all facets and what was amazing that it's just, it's not only my parents, even like my extended family knows now like because I'm out and I'm proud and like it's just a normal thing now and to know that even my extended family accepts me and even like that to know that my extended family also accepts me like you know, I will like that made my heart warm so much and that built up my self-esteem so much more because now I'm like listen no matter what society may say about me at the end of the day back home I got people who really love me and care for me and who are looking out for me even though I might not always like tell my family how much I love and appreciate them I really do because I'm not gonna lie, like, for me, my family was one of my safe spaces and, like, literally, when, when things would be tough at school or, like, in the world, like, I, it was really nice to know that I could come home and be, like, with people who love me and, like, to know that the fact, to know the fact that they love every single part of me and they accept every single part of me, ah, uh, like, that is just amazing and I wouldn't trade that in for the world and to my parents and my entire family I am extremely grateful for you guys like I love you guys so much so yeah that's my coming out story um what happened with like my cousin who outed me to my dad what's weird is that me and him have a really good relationship now I didn't speak to him about it I didn't confront him about it because like it didn't it didn't have any negative effects like it was actually positive that he did that but um I think he might have been out to his dad. I think so. I think he might have been out to his dad. But I think now also his family knows. Um, like everyone knows though. And I'm fine with everyone knowing. I'm just comfortable. As long as everyone knows and no one expects me to bring a wife home, I'm fine. Because <laughs> that's never going to happen. But anyway, yeah, that's my coming out story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you guys, um, if you're not out, I hope that maybe my coming out story might inspire you to come out because um, you really never know how your family is going to react you never know how people around you are going to react but I would say that at some point you have to live your truth and it's not even about the people around you whether it's society or your family at some point you really need to you really need to live your truth and and you really need to prioritize your happiness and your you really need to oh you really need to you really need to prior, prioritize oh, priorities your, why can't I say that word? Your happiness, put your happiness first. Period. Period. Put your happiness first, bruh. Put it first. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe and yeah, 
see you in the next video this was a lot Whoop, this was a lot but like thank you for listening to my story if you got this far thank you for listening and see you in the next video <laughs> bye guys